from community radio to commercial, from the BBC to Bauer. Despite what you might think, the UK radio industry is actually pretty simple. So stay tuned as we give you a brief explanation. Thanks for checking out Radio.co on YouTube. If you want to see more kit reviews, live webinars and handy broadcasting tips, then give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe and click the bell icon. So what's the UK radio industry made up of and how big is it? So the UK radio industry is worth around £1.37 billion. Around 7,000 people are employed in it and many more give their time up voluntarily. Listening to live radio, catch up and podcasts account for about 68% of all audio listening for UK adults. And on top of that, about 89% of the UK adult population listen to the radio each week. Nowadays, we consume radio in a few different ways. That includes through smart speakers, through apps, digital TV, and of course, traditional radio sets or DAB radio sets. UK radio is broadcast over AM, FM, DAB, satellite, and the internet. AM, FM, long wave, and DAB all have limited bandwidth so it can only support a limited number of stations. Ofcom, or the Office of Communications, decides which radio stations get a license to broadcast over AM, FM or DAB. Those radio stations that are licensed by Ofcom have to abide by the Ofcom Broadcasting Code. The Ofcom Broadcasting Code sets out a load of rules and regulations which says what can't and what can be broadcast. The UK radio industry is essentially made up of four parts. You've got the BBC, you've got commercial radio, you've got community or perhaps local radio, and then you've got internet radio. So let's take a look at these. Firstly, one of the major players, one of the biggies, is the BBC, also known as the British Broadcasting Corporation. The BBC is a national broadcaster, which means it has to be politically neutral. And the BBC has one of the biggest radio stations in the UK, which is BBC Radio 2. And Zoe Ball's breakfast show gets a whopping 7.5 million listeners. The BBC includes 10 radio networks and 39 local radio stations. And because it's funded by TV licences, there's no adverts. And it's a little bit confusing because even though BBC stations are funded by a TV licence, you don't need a TV licence to listen to BBC radio. All you need is a radio set or a device that can connect to the internet. The other major player in the UK radio industry is commercial radio. And commercial radio is those stations that are run for profit and they're typically run by big media brands such as Global and Bauer. That said, there's still a few independent commercial radio stations in the UK. So Global Media owns loads of popular radio stations such as Smooth, Kerrang and LBC. Likewise, Bauer Media owns Absolute, Kiss and Kerrang. Commercial radio stations typically make money by selling airtime to advertisers. They also run big competitions in which listeners have to pay to enter. Commercial radio stations are often available on AM or FM, DAB and online. Next up, community radio. And this can include student and hospital radio stations as well. When community radio stations are broadcasting over a particular bandwidth, they're typically limited on how far they can broadcast. So that might average five to six miles. The clues in the name of community radio stations, if they're licensed, that's so that they can serve a particular community. For example, Resonance FM is a London-based radio station that's licensed to serve the arts community. Community radio stations typically broadcast on AM or FM and they might have an online stream too. However, now we're also seeing Ofcom give out small-scale DAB licences, so some radio stations are starting to have that too. Community radio stations are typically funded by grants, donations, fundraising and local advertising. And now for our favourite, internet radio. Internet radio stations are radio stations that broadcast solely on the internet so they don't broadcast on terrestrial radio. Broadcasting over the internet alone means you don't have to get a license from Ofcom and that means you don't have to abide by the Ofcom broadcasting code. Internet radio stations can serve a community too if they wish. It's just this isn't a requirement for them because they're not licensed by Ofcom. We've seen big growth in this sort of radio in the past five to ten years. Within the UK, popular internet radio stations include NTS and Foundation FM. 
Although internet radio stations don't need an Ofcom license, they still need a music license if they're playing music that isn't royalty free. Internet radio stations can be funded by advertising, sponsorships, brand partnerships, and even charging their hosts subs. So there you have the UK radio industry in a nutshell. If you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, be sure to click like, hit subscribe, and ring the bell icon. Happy broadcasting. And just before you go, how would you like to launch your very own online radio station? Surprisingly, it's a lot simpler than you may think. And the absolute best way to get started is by chatting to myself or another member of the Radio.co team. To do that, just head to radio.co forward slash demo to schedule a video call with us, where we'll discuss your plans, answer your questions, and of course, guide you around the Radio.co software.